Okay, so this is just to show you how to make linked documents. Um, so basically, the first thing we have to do is in InDesign Preferences, we need to go to General and then look out for the um, section down here on the left that is File Handling. And then right down at the bottom where it's got links, click Create links when placing text and spreadsheet files. So that tick box needs to be on. By default, it won't be, but put a tick box there and say OK. Right, so now um, this is actually a template. So I'm just going to uh, save this as a, um, a basic document. I'm going to go into my chapters and I'm just going to call this chapter one like that okay so I'm in chapter one now I'm going to place my chapter one doc which is this one here so we have a, 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 a Microsoft Word document here this is how I'm going to suggest that you that you do it um, we can show the import options because we want to make sure that we uh, we use the styles that I've currently got in my template so I'm importing the styles, but I'm going to use the InDesign style definition and, and the character style definition. So in other words, um, although they're going to be bolted together, we're using the ones that we've already got. OK to that. And now with the shift key down, place it into that corner so that it actually creates pages automatically for us. Now, as you can see, um, the important thing here is that we've actually got a little icon up here which means that this is a linked document and if we look over here in the links panel you'll see that there's a linked document the chapter one doc x this is the information about it over here okay let's just move this down here so we can see a bit more information about this so it's on the story is unmodified as you can see so i haven't made any changes to it however um so Anyway, this is the this is the document, and obviously you 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 know about using this and how you want to style this and change the styles and change the fonts and all of this kind of stuff. Okay, that's fine. But what happens if the author changes their mind? They want to now change something in the Word document. Well, they can easily do that by going to the Word document itself. So quite independently, and let's actually just uh, zoom in on this a little bit um, and have a look here. Okay, let's imagine that we want to change this. So just bear this in mind, just kind of keep this in your mind, this little patch here where it ends uh, 90 deaths of both scholars and townsfolk. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Word document uh, and I'm going to look at this phrase here in the Word document. So I'm pretending to be a, an author of, or an editor of this document and um, I'm going to now make a few changes. So actually the number of deaths was actually 85. We had that wrong. Um, and we can even put uh, here, we can put scholars, uh, or we're going to take out the word both. Um, we're going to say scholars, university, lecturers, and townsfolk. And we save it like this, we go back to InDesign and you should see up here a little exclamation mark that means that there's been a change so just click on that, double click it and it refreshes and as you can see we've changed the text but we kept it, we kept the editing in Word rather than in InDesign now obviously you're going to expect the editors to make only minor changes if they do dramatic things like changing or like adding complete paragraphs and that's going to change the page numbering and everything else but at least you kept these two things separate that's the end of my little demonstration thank you